Shut up and sit down. Welcome to the Bricks King Podcast, where I'm going to bend your ear about Lego. Review those amazing bricks of plastic and discuss what is new and up and coming around the Lego world. I'm your minifig host, Matt. Let's build on it. Welcome in, everybody. How are you doing today? Hopefully you're doing lovely. I'm doing quite well myself. Happy to be here yet again. And uh, today we're, we're talking about a topic that could really launch somebody into a Lego-themed career. So obviously you've read the title of the episode. First thing that most people think of when they go to, you know, anything involving Lego, Lego products, Lego group, the Lego house, Lego stores, Lego discovery centers, Lego theme parks, hotels, whatever. First thing that usually comes to their mind when they think about Lego careers is Lego designer. That's like what so many people, you know, think and, and, and strive for. And there's, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, we, there have been a number of Lego Masters contestants from around the world that have turned that into a Lego career. You have had Lego designers leave the Lego community building whatever company, the Lego group, and go off and do other things involving Lego, but not working for the company directly. You know, whether it might be as an ambassador, um, it may be as a, you know, a content creator. You know, there have been a number of them that have left and have had YouTube channels prior and have YouTube channels now, whether they walked away from it or stepped it up. I mean, some, some really crazy things can happen. You know, you've got all that inside kind of knowledge. I mean, you're already a great builder at one point, obviously to be able to get the job, a great designer in some way, shape or form, but there's so much more to that. I mean, you take a, you take a simple $20 Lego city set or something like that. Like, uh, I don't know, one of, um, what was a burger truck this year? I can't remember. It came out in January. Something simple like that, right? But you have to have somebody that is, you know, kind of sketching this idea out of what it's going to look like. Parts that are going to be used. Colors that need to be in there. Um, certain parts, maybe Lego is pushing and saying, hey, we want this newish color. We want this salmon. We want this coral color. We want this sand blue color being used more often to justify the production of it or something. There's so many things on the inside that I can't even, I can't even speak to intelligently, not nearly enough because I just don't have that kind of information. That's something that, you know, picking the mind of a former designer, you know, that is where you're going to be able to find more so of that. And maybe not even with them anyway. So then you have, you know, you have your graphic designers and stuff like that, that are, they're coming up with the stickers. You have the people that are putting the instructions in a certain order to make sure that things aren't confusing and it's the correct color. It's being highlighted a certain way. It's it's all of these little things that go in and then you, that's just to get the idea designed of the set and then the instructions. And then you go into, you know, product marketing. What is the box going to look like? How big is the box going to be? What is the cost of this set? In the grand scheme of the wave, waves are usually roughly around four hundred dollars. I'd say four four fifty. So they they've got a product at each tier. So you've got your ten dollar, you've got a twenty dollar, you've got something around thirty, maybe fifty, then maybe ninety, then one fifty, two hundred. All of that stuff gets discussed. And right there, we've talked about one product, one little toy, and how many hands touched it. How many how many brains went through that process of of creating this thing. And that brings me back to this. There are hundreds of different careers at the Lego group. What we just mentioned four or five of them right there alone, quality assurance. I'm sure that, you know, all kinds of stuff. So I say all that to say this about, I don't know, probably four days ago, um, the ambassador network sent out a, um, an email thing to us and said, Hey, this is not a press release, but make sure you check out this area tomorrow. Uh, I believe it was in the news, uh, Lego news section of their website. And Jordan Paxton, who handles a lot of the the lug stuff and he does a bunch of other things as well, wears multiple hats. But so he sent this thing out and it's called the Lego designer talent pool. And I didn't even know this was a thing. 
I don't know if this is something brand new, but it doesn't appear that it's new. It appears that it's been around, but nobody knew of these things. And I'm going to just mention this one thing that he had said. He said, there are thousands of careers at Lego Group, at the Lego Group, my apologies. And I often tell people to find what they are good at and then find where that could fit in within the Lego Group. And that, that really kind of, it really kind of resonated at a certain degree with me, a certain way. And he went on, uh, the next sentence that he wrote, he said, I recognize that being a designer is the most common aspiration, though. The good news is that there's a talent pool that allows people to apply once, uh, but be considered for different design teams, all that kinds of stuff. So as soon as I, the, the, the evening that I got this, I believe it was an evening, it was last week, and or a couple days ago, I, all the days run together. I was like, okay, let me go check this out. So I'm going to give it to you here um, in, a, in a moment, the, uh, the website that you can go to. And it'll be down on the show notes, so you can click the link and follow it from there. But what you do is you, you can select your country or your region, and you can select a category. Or you can just do keyword search, right? Now, if you put in a country or a region, it's only going to show you jobs that are available in that region within that category. However, if you were, there's another button down here. It says, if you click view all jobs right now. Okay. So there are more jobs right now. When I last checked it a couple of days ago, it was 473. There's now currently 490 open positions for the Lego group around the world. Now you may, you may say oh, that's not a whole lot. It's actually quite a bit. Now, some of these titles are, you know, you're, you're, you're going to a certain place. You know, one of them, the very first one here, it's the newest one that came out as of today, uh, the 31st of May, is a business insights analyst. And the category it falls under is consumer service and contact center operations. It's in Singapore. So you've got to move to Singapore. Some of them appear to be almost like a hybrid remote to a certain degree, but I think majority, definitely majority of them are like an in-person thing. So you've got a, for instance, play experience designer. That's in Billund. Senior manager of entertainment development. That's in Billund. You know, you've got um, jobs in Hungary, literally everywhere. Here's, here's the other thing that I found uh, fascinating. So a sales associate, and they have it listed as like brick specialist and king of Prussia mall in Pennsylvania from my home state. You're working as retail. Now, some of them, when you click on them, it'll, it'll tell you what you're doing. Well, it'll tell you, of course, what you're doing, but some of them it's like part-time. Some of these brick specialists is part-time. It's not full-time. It's you know, so you have that to keep in mind. So for instance, I'm going to go here right here just because I live in the United States and it's much easier to do this. I'm just going to click United States and then click search. And that's going to give me all of the jobs in the United States. Currently, there's 146 of them and they, they rank from the most, uh, you could go by posted date. Um, I think that's the only way you can sort anyway. Well, I guess you could do it by job title as well, but posted date, part-time store supervisor in West, West Nyack. I don't know where that's, that sounds like New York. West Nyack sounds like, like West Nyack, New York. It sounds, sounds familiar. Anyway, that was September 18th, 2022. And again, you open it and you're kind of like, okay, you got your core responsibilities, all this kind of stuff. But it's, it's really kind of quite fascinating to me. And that was just, that was just part time, right? Like you're just, you're talking about part time stuff. Dallas, a part time retail supervisor. Here at the, the, we have two Lego stores within, I don't know, 30 minutes of each other. One in Dallas, one in Frisco, Texas, which is just right up the highway, right up the tollway. So you have all of those, but then you also have, you know, some of them customer service representative, Spanish speaking. It's a hybrid job. That's out of Enfield. Now the United States office is moving to headquarters is moving to Boston. I believe 2025, if I'm not mistaken. Obviously, some jobs, you know, somebody like Sarah, Sarah Scahill, which you guys last year, uh, I, I interviewed her at um, Chicago Brick World. Her job is more of a remote thing. And if I recall, if I recall her mentioning, and I don't, I don't think it was on that episode, but I, I think in conversation I had with her that she would, that not everybody had to move to Boston, that they were having kind of like the option. Like they could still, like if they lived in Enfield, Connecticut, they could stay they would just have to obviously work remote. I'm not, don't quote me on that. 
but I, I recall vaguely something like that being said. How about the vice president of Lego Education US? How cool is that, huh? <laughs> it's wild. Some of these jobs are just, there. there's a lot. And you, you have stuff the whole way from like um, legal, the whole way up to, you know, or the whole way down to the people on the, the floor at the factories and stuff like that. You know, you got supervisors, you've got quality auditors, different shifts. The amount of jobs that are out there is just mind blowing. So if you're, if you're curious to know where to go here, you can go to lego.com forward slash careers. So when you go there, obviously it's going to be region specific. Obviously I, when I go to lego.com, it sends me to the U.S. site because I'm United States, right? That's where I am in the world. <laughs> but if you're in Hungary and you search, it's going to take you to whatever your Lego site is in your region. Or your country, I should say. So, a lot of jobs out there. And like I said, most most people don't realize or really stop and think what other careers are out there. You know, for me, as, as a teacher, there's there's a number of other careers that I could do with, with the degree and my work experience and stuff like that. And then I look at, you know, something on Lego's website and I'm like, huh, that would be interesting. Huh, team leader in stores. Huh, but... I'm not moving to Illinois. <laughs> that is not happening. <laughs> I'm also not moving to a bunch of these places like the the factory in Richmond, uh, Virginia. I know some people that live in Virginia, a couple ambassadors that are in that region. There you go. Could be an opportunity. Crazy opportunity, I guess, but um but you have to yeah, you have to go look at these. If you're looking for a new career, if you're just looking for a gig, maybe you want to work in a Lego store. It's in there. You know, I, I, it's not that this stuff was ever hidden. It's just that it was never, it's never been really discussed. You know, no one has ever stopped and said, Hey, I wonder what kind of other careers that are at the Lego group, like pushing paper, you know, and those of you that don't understand that meaning an office job, something like that. Well, somebody has got to do it. You've, you've got to have a secretary for somebody. You've got to have a, I don't know, a, some kind of people running an office, you got to have an office manager, you got to have, there's so many different careers. And like I told you, as, as of current count at the timing of time of this uh, episode is 490. That's a lot. It's a lot of openings that need filled. Now, like I said, the one issue is, well, there's only so many jobs in so many locations. Like, you know, if you search Dallas, there's only going to be so many positions in Dallas, but if you are somebody that is flexible, or you're somebody that is able to uh, potentially, depending on what the job is, able to work. If, if the job is a, more of a remote job, then that changes things. Then you have an opportunity there, you know, the, the hybrid models, where sometimes you've got to be on, on, um, on campus, if you will, on, on location, or, you know, you could be remote. And it, it's funny because when designers go to work for Lego people that go and actually are working in Billund. It's a whole different ball game. I cannot imagine moving from Texas in the United States to bill in Denmark in Europe and not having homesickness to a certain degree, culture shock for sure. Excitement as well. <laughs> Cause I want to tour Europe <laughs> But all of that kind of stuff that goes into such a big move, you're not moving a couple cities away or, you know, in this case, in the United States, it being so big, a couple states away, you're going to have a difference of, of where you live. North Texas to South Texas to East Texas to West Texas are completely different. You're not going to get the same living conditions. You're not going to get the same cultures. It is almost a different state of its own. It's like different places in California, different cities in California. Northern, middle, and Southern California are not the same. So somebody that wants to move, you know, gets accepted, hired to be a designer at the Lego group, that might, that's got to be a crazy cool experience. But also, it, it seems very uh, terrifying, to be honest. You know, if you're young, you know, you're in your early 20s, maybe even in your th early 30s, you know, you're kind of like, okay, adventure, this is, this is going to be fun. My age at this point, I'm kind of like, man. First off, let's let's not kid anyone. I'm not going to be a Lego designer ever. That's 
let's just cut the cord right there. <laughs> There's no point to carry on that conversation because that would never happen. However, it's got to be absolutely terrifying to move over into something like that and just be ing- have to kind of ingrain yourself in the culture, not just of a new country, a new city, a new region, different climate, the people. Everybody in Billund, it is Lego. Billund is Lego. Lego is Billund. I mean, they're synonymous with one another. You People say, oh, oh, where'd you go, Billund? Oh, Lego's there, right? Yeah. Huh? Oh, where'd you go? Um, I went to the Lego house. Oh, in Billund, in Denmark. You see, they just tied together. And it would almost be, now I'm completely speaking out of turn here because I don't know this. I would just imagine having a career over there, working in that location every single day would be challenging to a certain degree just because you you never get away from it, if that makes sense. You know, for me right now as a teacher, you know, I don't teach in the same city that I live in and I used to, and it was, it was, it was just kind of annoying. Isn't the right word. It was just kind of like exhausting maybe just because if I went to a local store or a local restaurant, I don't always want to be talked to. Te- people don't always want to be talked to. And, you know, they when they want to go out with their families and stuff like that. And, hi, hey, hey. I, I want to go out to the store. I want to go grab my stuff. I want to come back. I want to get my groceries. I want to come back. <laughs> I don't want to run into 10 different people that I have either taught their children or I, I work. It, it's just, it's a different, it's a different thing just because my profession is so exhausting. And when I say exhausting, I don't physically to a certain degree, but just mentally exhausting after, after a day or a week, last thing I want to do on the week is run into somebody, you know, and be like, Oh, Hey, do you remember me? I know I don't sure. Don't hope you're doing well though. (laughs) However, but I live in a different city. I don't have to deal with that. I don't, when I leave work, I leave work. When you live in Billund and you work for the Lego group, people, people know who you are, right? You're the face of a designer is out there, you know, with the internet and with all the ambassadors that do interviews and stuff like that. I mean, if you look on Brickset, you can see all of the, uh, the creators that are out there, designers that are out there past present that have built these things and their name is attached to it. And I don't know if you knew about that on Brickset, but you can look up sets based on just the designer themselves, something they had a hand in. And they usually leave a caption there that says, hey, I did this, or I created the drawing of this and it was handed off to somebody else. So there's dozens and dozens, thousands, according to Jordan, of careers in the Lego group, which there are. There's a bunch of positions all over the world. So if you're somebody that is interested, like I said, go to the website, lego.com forward slash careers, check it out. Search it. If anything, just for sheer curiosity to see what is out there. You never know. Maybe you're maybe you're somebody that has just graduated from law school in, I don't know, or you know, a couple years ago. Maybe you're like, you know what? I want to be, I want to be an associate corporate counsel on IP stuff. That I could do that, right? You know? You might be thinking, uh, hey, you know what? This would be a cool job. So I implore you, just go check it out and see. You just you honestly never know. And it may be one of those things like today you heard this and you're like, you know, I was kind of looking for a change. And now I, you know what? Let's see what's out there. Oh, oh, that seems, that seems cool. You know what? I'm interested in moving. Let's check that out. You just never know. You always got to keep your eyes open and you always got to be looking for the next best opportunity. If you're not, you should. Teachers always looking for a better opportunity. Everybody's looking for better opportunities, whether it be financial or in, in a certain position, maybe you want to be a manager of, um, a, of a Lego store. I don't know. You got to get in somewhere. Maybe you're already in somewhere and now you're like, you know what? There's an opening right there. I'm going to apply for that. But I, I will tell you, I definitely looked at one of these part-time uh, Lego store gigs. I definitely did. Because, you know, you're talking, I don't know, 20, 25 hours a week. I, I definitely thought about it. But there's no way I could do it during the school year. There's no way. Physically, there's no way. So anyway, before we get out of here, the thing I mentioned about Brickset, I intentionally did that. So next week, I believe it's next Tuesday, Wednesday, I have an interview with a Lego designer. Um, I think his name is Marin. It's M-A-R-I-N. 
and Marin has uh, really stuck his hands into the uh, into the uh, Lego Speed Champions. He's now a part of that team. Initially, I wanted to try and get Chris Stamp because he he was such a great person to talk to before. So much knowledge, such a, just a fun guy to talk to in general, especially he was so passionate about cars in general. Now I believe he's on to, I think he's part of the Lego city team and I think he's got his hands into something else. And that's, that's another question that I've, I've got for uh, Marin of how, how are these things kind of thrown about? You kind of like, Hey, you know what? I'd like to be on this team. Can I get in on this team? Obviously you're not getting in on the star Wars team. <laughs> Those guys are locked into place and aren't going anywhere. But um, that interview will be out hopefully sometime next week. And uh, I will do my best to doctor up the audio. Usually it's not the greatest due to the fact that they have to they have to run the call. I can't send them. Usually when I have a guest on remotely, I go through a, a different program than Teams, Microsoft Teams, just because I don't like Teams. It's it's not the best quality and it, it, I'm, I'm more reliant on them. Whereas if I do it from my end and I use the program that I like, I get better quality. It's just, it's just a better overall experience, but because they're, I guess, you know, they're on the clock, all that kind of stuff. It is run through there. And I understand that, but that interview will be coming sometime next week once we get into it. So you'll have to check it out. We've got some really interesting questions. Not anything that's going to be like, hey, uh, when was the last time you got slapped across the face? Like nothing, nothing weird like that. But definitely some, you know, insightful questions, especially with the new speed champions that have come out or uh, that are coming out, which I've got got a few of these guys sitting right here on my desk in the next wave. So those will be coming as well. So I hope you guys you know, found this episode a little uh, insightful, inquisitive to a certain degree, where you're like, you know, maybe, because there's always a face behind everything. It's not just the Lego group product designers. There are thousands and thousands of other people just to be able to get that thing built, sold, sent just into your hands alone. So just think about it. So anyway, it's going to wrap up this episode. Until we meet again, I'm your minifig host, Matt. Let's build on it. <laughs>